GM kills the Chevy Bolt, the UK drops the hammer on Microsoft and Activision, and space failures could have an impact on exploration efforts to move beyond planet Earth. We'll chat about these topics and more on this episode of Today in Tech. Hi, everyone. I'm Keith Shaw. Welcome to Today in Tech. Pushing the buttons, as always, is Chris from Behind the Computers. Hi, Chris. Hey, how's it going? Good. So should we address the uh, the elephant in the room? What's that? The, your facial beard area has, has been shaven off. Shaved I don't know what you're off. talking about. Oh, is this your twin brother that we're talking about? Or is this? It, no. No? Okay. no, it is in fact me. It is um, you. I did shave, yes. I'll admit, in case you haven't noticed, I, so, I did. So we're okay with scaring small children that might be watching this at the moment. Uh, <laughs> maybe not, but well, no, I, I'll get used to it. I'll get used to it, and of course, you're gonna just so so. I'm, I'm still getting used to it myself. Yeah, a co- I, you know, a coworker. Is it itching? Do you do you itch? No, no, no? no okay. not that much. All right, so a coworker did actually comment that I am now outpacing you in terms of the uh, beard, but I figure by next week you'll be passing me again because you you can yeah. grow a beard really fast by tomorrow. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's jump into the news of the week, uh, tech wise. Uh, we've got some some interesting news going on or, uh, around sort of I don't want to say failures, but more of like roadblocks for a, a bunch of companies. So let's start with the Microsoft Activision deal. Uh, this was a seventy five billion dollar deal that was announced last year, I think. So this was a big merger of uh, Microsoft, which is you know obviously a huge huge tech company. Uh, they wanted to buy Activision Blizzard, and Activision Blizzard was a gaming developer company that has uh, you know games like Call of Duty. Uh, on the Blizzard side, they have World of Warcraft. They've got uh, Diablo. Uh, Diablo 4 is, is coming out uh, in a couple months. And uh, Microsoft wanted to buy that. And then basically everyone was saying that they're going to... Um, you know, make a lot of exclusives and that got a lot of people upset because Call of Duty apparently is, is a huge, huge huge video yeah game. yeah no it's it's pretty big but i don't play it myself because I, I stink at those types of games but you know it's it, it is a big and that's what and you know sony was really upset about that possibility um also given you know so the uk uh it was the hold on for a second it was it's a different it's like the agency was the competition and markets authority basically quashed the deal or rejected this this deal uh, basically said that uh, Microsoft had failed to convince the agency that actions the company had proposed since announcing the deal would sufficiently ease the regulator's competition worries. The CMA has said that the deal poses a competition threat to the UK's video game industry and has been reviewing the transaction for months. Um, now, this investigation focused solely on the UK market, but according to the Wall Street Journal article, because the video game industry is complex and global, it would be difficult for a combined Microsoft Activision to com- operate completely outside of that market. Uh, the U.S. Federal Trade Commission and the European uh, European Union's competition watchdog are also examining the deal. Uh, this decision would not have any direct bearing on those proceedings, but such global deals typically need the endorsement of the world's biggest competition authorities to move ahead. So, yeah. There's a, you know, and of course, both companies have said that they're going to try to uh, appeal Uh, an article today in the Wall Street Journal said that that's probably unlikely that 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 hurdle to sort of get that reversed is 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 pretty high. And so um, we'll see what happens with the U.S. There's a hearing in June. Um, But I just wanted to talk generally about sort of sort of this the video game competition that's going on these days. You know, it used to be. Just, you know, the three big companies are Sony, PlayStation, or Sony, Xbox, you know, Sony, Xbox, and Nintendo, and Xbox right. being Microsoft. Right. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it, honestly. Yeah. And it, it's not necessarily video games in general where we can see this, uh, where we can see this happening, right? Um, we see it in film and video, um, Netflix, we can thank net Netflix and all the streaming services for kind of monetizing all of the content that we watch. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't have said that. I should have said films and movies that we watch. <laughs> See, then here this is the problem because everything now is content. Yep. All the all the movies we watch, everything is just content and I think if if Microsoft went ahead and and bought Activision Blizzard, right? I think that's what video games are going to become, just content. They're going to be shallow husks of a game, and they're going to stuff a bunch of loot 
you know, the loot boxes in and just try to squeeze every little dime out of, out of, out of their, their audience, their yeah. players. Right. So, um, it, it was, is there, was there a possibility that this might be a good idea? Yeah, I, I think well, there is. Yeah, Cause th- you know, yeah. they'll, Activision Blizzard, they'll probably get more capital behind. They'll probably have more money, create more games. Yeah, that's cool. But it, it's, it's, I, I think it's the fear of having one kind of, one entity owning everything else and pulling all the strings, you know, and you know, whatever the Microsoft buys, I, I mean, this is probably not true, but it's like you kind of, they kind of lose their independence, you know? Right. So, so if you I, were, if you were a game developer, you know, a few years ago, you would develop it most, most the way that the competition was sort of in the marketplace for at least the, the, the three big console areas. Now this is different from PC gaming because obviously PC gaming, is a different animal altogether. But you could you would develop a game and you would develop it for multiple platforms. You develop it for the PC, you develop it for Xbox, you develop it for PlayStation. Eventually it comes over to the Nintendo Switch at, at some point. So you, you build the game so that it can be played on these multiple platforms. Right. And and it felt like that's where we were all going. But now as these come as as the hardware companies start buying up the game developers, they start doing things like exclusive content, exclusive titles. Sony's no Sony has this well, with some of their games. They've got the Horizon Forbidden West or for, you know the Horizon series. Um, they've got the Spider Man series that's exclusive to them. So if you want to play that game, you have to sort of sign up on that platform. Right. right. And so Microsoft, I think, was trying to be like, well. We need to sort of some of that on our own to try to get people to buy more of the Xboxes um, as, as opposed to just developing a gaming platform and hope that all of your they're, developers develop li- on each of these, these things. Like they bought Bethesda, which made the Fallout series yeah. and uh, the Skyrim series, the Elder Scrolls. And those are two of my favorite games. And they're coming out with the one called Starfield, which is coming out in a couple months. And I won't be able to play it because it's a Microsoft only game. Because Microsoft bought Bethesda, and, and there's no way around it. I have to buy an Xbox if I want to play it. Yeah, I mean, kind of, kind of, or a PC, I guess. Yeah, kind of branching off to what you said. I mean, Microsoft is literally they're they're they're, they're trying to make the Netflix for gaming, the right. Netflix of gaming, right? And it's just, I, I don't know. Well, I, I don't. So, yeah, see it, and again, so they've got a thing called Game Pass, but it still has to be. I think it still has to be played on an Xbox system, though, right? In order to get the Game Pass. Yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, it's, it's through, maybe again, I don't. Maybe you do need. Maybe if you had a PC, you could get it through. It's the PC Microsoft. Games. Yeah, yeah. It's all one and the same. Um, but, but that's like you know the cloud, the cloud gaming idea is going to happen at some point. Um, you, you, we saw it with streaming and with your your movies and your TV. You know, I, you're going to be streaming. You're not going to own anything. You're going to just you're just going to subscribe right, to a right, service. Right. You know, you're going to pay thirty bucks a month or whatever, and then you can play any game you want, and and then stream it over the cloud. You'll be playing it off of a server. Nvidia is trying this with its GeForce Now service, mm-hmm. which is pretty impressive because now instead of buying a high end PC, you can play some of this stuff on this like this MacBook right here could play a lot of these higher end games. You're just streaming it off of a of, off of a high end server mm-hmm. uh, as long as your broadband connection is. Is decent uh you can play the same game as if you had you know a, a, a mega computer next to you yeah i, I think there's going to be some pushback on that though well the problem I, is I, is that they don't have the titles they don't have you know a lot of these services it's that, not it's not just that it's yeah. not just the titles but i also, it's the concept it's the concept right because going back to what you said uh a few minutes ago like like how a game developer works right they they create a game well bef- let's say before the internet Right. Let's say before the internet, okay. they, they create a game, and then their whole business is run on how many copies of your game were sold, and then that's it. Right. And then they move on. They take what they've made, then they take and invest in, in you know the next iteration or another game, right? And then they might have some investors help out, right? And then sell that copy, and then make a profit off of that. Whereas like today, you can create, you can develop a game half baked. And release it and, oh, most start, of them are. and start creating, generating uh, income, uh, revenue, right? Yeah. So as a gamer, getting a half-baked game is not fun. <laughs> and if that's the business model that Microsoft is going to push with their whole gaming as a service... I don't know. I just don't see it. And, and well, I mean, Bl- you know, Blizzard, which owns, you know, World of Warcraft. I mean, the World of Warcraft has been around for... It's an 15, MMORPG, though. But it's, it is. It's but, different. But the, the idea is that you pay a monthly subscription. Right. Pay 10 bucks a month. You get, because of that money that you're 
constantly pumping into the game, you know, again, $120 a year. Yeah. If you've been playing for the last 10 years, that's $1,200 that you've given to them. Right. Versus just a $60 game or a $50 game back then. Yeah. Um, you know, you get all this additional content. Except for in, what's interesting is that when they then do a major release, then you have to pay again. You pay another twenty bucks for the DLC, right? Uh, but you know you're constantly giving them more and more money, and the idea is that they'll take that money and then make the game better than it was when it started with additional content. Fortnite's like that all the time. Like Fortnite is constantly evolving, uh, adding new, adding new player skins, adding new, you know, changing the map around. So yeah, but you know, but but that was to be expected with MMORPG. That's right? more of a game as a service type thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, like, uh, what was the game I, I used to play back in the day? Guild Wars. It was the competitor yep. to World of Warcraft. Yep. And I, and I liked Guild Wars because it was free to play. Yeah. And it's, then you have microtransactions. Right. And then you have transactions in, in the game. Yeah, you have microtransactions, right? Which was fine because the expectation is the game is free. You're yeah. not paying for it. You're not paying the, the $60, $70, right? But, but um, you, you know, you're, you're seeing games today that, again, are, are half-baked and they're really not worth it. And... Uh, what I was just saying a couple minutes ago is like, you're going to start seeing pushback. If we look at what Sony has been doing, right, with their AAA releases, Horizon Zero Dawn, God of War, um, geez, Elden, Elden Ring. Like, there's no... But that wasn't an exclusive. It wasn't. But no. it, again, it's the concept of mm -hmm. you, you develop a game right, and you release it. Right. That's it. And now they're going to make the second one. Aren't I they, hope they do because it was amazing. They're not doing, they're not doing DLC for Elden Ring? They did. They did one round of DLC, I believe. Okay, I gotta confirm on that, but I believe they did, or they did some updates and stuff. But like that's it. You, there's no microtransaction. It's complete game. You can take the disc, you put it in, and play it, and you don't need to spend anything more than that. And I think that's what players are missing today. They're missing that that time where you just buy a game and play it, and but then and then you get rewarded by your gameplay in the game. I, you know, I, you know? I think the idea of this cloud gaming is not what we've got now. Not you know now you have a place. So I've got a PlayStation Five, and I, I subscribe to the PS Plus, the subscription service. I get a bunch of free games every month. Yeah. Um, I get bonus content for some games if I've been playing those games. You get like extra skins for some of the the player characters, things like that. But then they have another couple of tiers where they then give you access to the, the complete library of, of games going all the way back to like the PS2. So if you were a huge fan all those years and that's an extra. So that's extra money per month. I think it's now 20 to 30 dollars extra a month. And that's sort of what the Xbox Game Pass is. That's not, I don't think that's sort of where it's going. I mean, you're going to have those, but what I think the next iteration is, is you're going to eventually get rid of the hardware altogether. And you're going to basically just buy a controller. And that controller is going to either be wired into a little box that connects to your broadband, or it's going to be wireless. And you're just basically going to be streaming these games off the server and yeah. all of the games that you can do. And I think they just have to figure out the right price for it. And then as the game gets released, you don't have to buy a physical, physical yeah, copy, I mean, even a digital copy. It just becomes part of the service. Like every time Netflix puts out another movie, you have access to it because you're subscribing to the game. And again, they've got you locked in because if you drop if you drop the subscription, you're just you don't get to play it anymore or you don't get to watch the movie. Yeah, and then I mean for Netflix you don't necessarily why, why own. Is, why does that not make sense for you as a consumer, I guess? Well, I mean look at Stadia. Remember Google Stadia? Yeah, but that's Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that failed miserably. That's basically a cloud service, gaming, a gaming cloud service that failed horribly. I, uh, you know, well, and again, I think we just haven't seen we just haven't seen success yet because the major game developers and publishers have not allowed some of these games to be played that way. And maybe that's what maybe Microsoft needs to do that with if with big AAA titles from you know these these yeah. publishers. I, I say, I, just, I think it, I think at the end I, I I'll remain cautiously optimistic. Okay. How about that? I'll stay cautiously optimistic, and I still hope that we do see more game developers creating more games like Elden Ring, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn. You know, there's probably going to be options. It's going to be the cloud route and then the old school, you know, gamer route. I don't know. Do you know that I recently crossed that, that chasm between always getting a uh, physical copy of the game versus now digital copy? I'm now in the digital copy world. And you know what oh, did it for me? it's all digital. You know what it did it for me? What? It, the supply chain shortages. Well, like like that Harry Potter game came out, yeah. the the Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah, yeah. 
And I went, I tried to go to a, my local GameStop to get it. And they're like, oh yeah, we don't have any. Like they just, they limited the number of physical copies. And I, instead of go, waiting and trying to go ar- around to store after store after store to try to find it, it's like, why don't I just buy the digital game? And then it's the same price. You're still going to pay the same price. Some, some of that's misleading. Cause if, uh, what was it? I, th- I think it was the last Call of Duty. I think that came out. Okay. You buy the game, the physical copy, you go to the store, you pop the disc in. All it is is just a key yeah. for you to download yeah. the, it still the game over the, game. the internet. Yeah, you still got to so, do the, the six gig update that takes a while to, to download. Yeah. I don't know. I, I miss I miss the old days. And, and that, that, that's, that's, well, how, yeah. that's how I felt when I played Elden Ring. I'm like, oh my God, this is... It feels out of time. <laughs> it, fe- it felt out of time Didn't playing that game, do- but in a good way. Okay. But... You know what? You know what? Old school for me is it's the Atari cartridge, dude. Like that's the and then you or the Nintendo one. No, you, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm talking like PlayStation to, Two days, right? Right. Um, where you buy a game and that's it. You play it. You might get some DLC if you're lucky, and I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that the DLC has been cool to sort of extend the the life of a game. Oh no, I I like DLC. DLC is nice. Okay. Like I've been prepping for Diablo Four by going back into Diablo Three, and I've been playing that for a while. You know. Yeah. In the latest season, so that was cool. Um, one other thing on the video game before we move on is the um, I'm actually have, do you have a Steam Deck or any of those sort of mobile sort of should I get into that at all I don't know if you you, you might not have those but um, there's been a, I've been as I've been monitoring the news there's been a couple of competitors that come out and I'm, maybe this is more of a question for any of the, the audience members out there uh, to see if it's worth investing into a Steam Deck. Uh, because again, I, my, the problem that I'm now having is that uh, as I'm getting older, I, I tend to play less and less games than I did maybe 20 years ago. So do I, you know, I still, I still like video games. I still like, I, I've never gone into the whole, I'm just going to play Candy Crush or any of those mobile games or anything like that. I, I tend not to do that, but uh, when I'm out and about, it might be nice to have sort of a, a mobile gaming platform that I could pull out. I, yeah, no, I, I don't have a Steam Deck or any of the okay. handheld. All right, we'll yeah, we'll leave that for probably. the uh, for the audience to, to chime in on. All right, so the next thing I wanted to talk about, there were a bunch of different space mishaps that I wanted to sort of bring up to you. Um, the first one was well, okay, the first one was this uh, space mission from Japan. Uh, there was a company called iSpace, and they. Basically, we're trying to land something on the moon, and apparently, it accelerated before it crashed onto the moon. So they were going to land on the surface of the moon. Uh, Japan's iSpace said its lunar lander may have unexpectedly accelerated on its way down before crashing on the lunar surface. The Hakuto R mission one lander was scheduled to touch down April 25th. Uh, shortly after the scheduled landing time, no data was received indicating a touchdown. Uh, Basically, they're assuming that it basically crashed. Well, so what they're really saying, and uh, let me help the audience out with this, is <laughs> what it did was it crashed into one of Elon's uh, space uh, SpaceX shuttles because <laughs> he's you know he's already populated Mars in, in the moon. So I thought you were going to talk about the aliens that the alien shot it down because could think, could be that too. Yeah. But you know, I, I, I forgot my tinfoil hat. <laughs> So, all right, moving on, move. So, you know, SpaceX last week as well, um, they were launching the, their Starship without any people on it. This was a test of, of, you know, just to try to see if they could clear the platform. It's a new rocket. It's a new sort of uh, platform. And, and it, it cleared the launch platform, uh, went, went up a couple miles, and then... And then SpaceX actually detonated the self-destruct because they noticed that things were going wrong. So obviously, uh, the company then said, oh, no, no, we're going to learn a lot of data from this. And I believe that. I, I believe that in terms of, you know, what happened. Uh, the third story that I wanted to then bring up was there was a, <laughs> this was, I, I know it shouldn't be funny, but apparently Sweden launched a rocket uh, a research rocket launched by the Sweden Space Corporation, and uh, basically it malfunctioned and landed inside Norway. And but I again, feel bad no, for Norway. Well, nobody was hurt apparently, and uh, this was you know they don't know exactly where it landed, but you know there was no damage. Like it didn't land in a city, so that's good. But but it's it's interesting that w- you know three kind of incidents over the past week. And it just feels like it's like, you know, what's going on with with sort of space tech? And I know that 
you know, NASA is is doing a, is doing a lot of privatization of some of these missions. They they are they do want to go back to the moon. They are going to launch a crew. They're going to launch, uh, you know, so humans are going to land on the moon again. I think they're launching on the polar ice caps because they're because they've discovered that there's water, and so they wanted they want to like take some robots and and astronauts and then kind of explore those areas because again when, see if there's life and this was now f- almost 54 years ago it'll be this, this will be the 54th anniversary of the the moon landing if you believe the people that we actually landed on the moon in 1969 we did we okay. did we did uh <laughs> that's just a shout out to all of the tinfoil hat wearers of the audience and um so you know I'm sort of in favor of sort of these private companies sort of helping out and, and, you know, it's still NASA. I still want NASA to sort of run the whole thing, but I'm just wondering like with, with all of these incidents, yes, there, there are mishaps and we're learning from this, but doesn't it feel like there's more mishaps these days than successes or is it just a random, this was just a random coincidence of three, you know, random events. I mean, trying to go to another planet i mean that's a extreme what? difficulty yeah right to try to do that so I, uh, you realize how hard it is to get stuff into space yeah yeah no exactly so i i don't i don't think this is i don't think it's a cause for concern or, or issue i think it's it's probably given you know like let's say you know we look at tesla's spa, uh, spacex program it's like okay they're scheduled to I don't know, launch X amount of rockets, probably like 90% of them are going to fail. Yeah. Cause the only way to learn, you know, how to do it right is to, you're going to have to have mistakes. Yeah. And, and so but I, I, out of the atmosphere, this is also a generational thing. Cause I, I, I grew up on the tail end of the sort of the space race, uh, from the, from the sixties. Um, I didn't, I wasn't around. I mean, I was alive, but I was only like one when they landed on the moon. So, I don't remember that. I do remember as a young child, I, I remember watching a TV show of one of the moon landings and I, it was probably the last one. So it was, you know, old enough to remember, but it was probably the 73 or 74, whatever the last mission was. I do remember that. And my, my brother and I were really into sort of Kennedy Space Center and we went there in the, in the early days and had a bunch of rockets and astronauts and space stuff. And then Star Wars came out and then it was like, oh, sci-fi, that's so much better than reality, you know, in terms of the space stuff. But you're a younger, you're younger than me. And like, do you remember sort of anything interesting about space? or like were you born after the challenger disaster were you do you remember that at all or you just is that more of a history thing for you oh uh, like the space I, shuttle program I, I i think it happened when i was little i can't remember yeah. exactly but i mean in terms of space all i remembered was just star wars you know yeah <laughs> yeah like even like because again after this after they ended the space shuttle program there was no, there was yeah. no interesting things coming out of the space sort of news other than hey, other other than movies other than the, well go to the international space station and talk to an astronaut maybe in in school maybe they'll they'll do something special at your school yeah so the fact that that nasa wants to and then and then it became mars and then it was all about landing the the rovers on mars i do remember watching one of the the uh mars landing sort of videos that they had uh, i think w- I, I was down with my wife we were down uh, in at kennedy space center during uh, the transmission of the landing. So they had a thing set up and you could watch it happen live type of a thing. Um, but yeah, other than that, so interesting, like now we can, now the fact that we're going back to the moon is kind of a cool thing. And I was covering robotics for a while and there's a lot of autonomous space robots that are being used. And, you know, there's this idea that we're going to start having like a settlement on the moon. And then that sort of jump starts all of these things that, that you were reading in sci-fi. So it was, it, it's cool that we're sort of doing this, but as I'm a little concerned that as these mishaps happen, um, I, I don't know if there's going to be some naysayers out there that are like, why are we doing this? And you know, we shouldn't, this is why, why am I, this is my old person voice now. Why should, why are we doing all Keep this? You okay. Yeah. I'm all right. So uh, maybe it's just a coincidence that, that these things happen, but I'm hoping that there won't be some more incidents like this and that we actually sort of find some successes and that NASA sort of is able to trumpet some of these more success, successful missions. So, all right. Space. Yay. That's, that's my, my takeaway. All right. So this is another story that we were, you know, we've been talking about a bunch of electric vehicle stuff 
And Chevy this week, or General Motors this week, announced that it was going to stop production of its electric Chevy Chevy Bolt models by the end of this year. The Chevy Bolt EV and EUV, large version of the car, make up the vast majority of the company's electric vehicle sales to date. However, the battery cells in the cars are an older design in chemistry than the automaker's newer electric vehicles, such as the GMC Hummer and Cadillac Lyric, which utilize the uh, Altium architecture. So... Basically, it feels like this, you know, this, this company is abandoning that sort of affordable mid, you know, af, you know, and I use affordable in quotes. Yeah. Um, well, they, they got to upgrade, right? They're upgrading the tech, the battery tech. And it, it feels like in order to, because of that, that you have to sort of go to that high end EV market, which is going to bring it's, you know, yeah. it's like when you buy a new iPhone, it comes with new like a new port or something or, or whatever you, you gotta, you know, you have to get the new model. Yes. But eventually, but again, as, as iPhones get older, you can sort of buy refurbished ones and older ones. You, yeah. Can you do that with EVs? I, not, I, not, not without replacing the, the skateboard, the whole battery pack. I yeah. mean, that's the thing. That's well, the thing with EVs is like, do you see all, used Teslas on, on the road at all? I mean, people just, if they're going to buy their Tesla, they're keeping it for, Years and, yeah, years and years and years. Yeah, I'm sure you can find a used one. I mean, I'm I'm sure. But do you have to replace the battery in that? Oh yeah, in in all EVs, yeah, because it's it's lithium, it's lithium. So over time, you know, just like our phones, it loses charge. It's yeah. electrical charge after you know x amount of years. So um, I, I just I, you know, and it, I mean, I I'm not I, I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not surprised that Chevy's doing this, and you know, I think we're going to see it in all other. <laughs> Um, EV car manufacturers, unless they can find a way to just, I mean, honestly, well, actually, no, you know, they could have done it where, or they could have designed the cars in a way where you just swap out the battery, literally, like just, I don't know if there's a way for them to just pop out the, the whole, uh, battery housing on inside the car through the bottom and then just pop in the new version. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That would be very cost saving, which I don't think Chevy would want to do. I think they would just want to have you buy a whole brand new car. You know what I mean? Because they're our company. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't know. I I I was hoping that that eventually car makers would be able to sort of get the price down as they produce more and more of these things, which is sort of that scalability argument of. You know, well, did they give a price? Did they give a price of the new? Of their upscale ones. Yeah, like what I don't like what see a price, um, but I know that they are upscaled. Mainstream drivers. Okay, so the plus the the bolt was thirty five. Like thirty five is just about the tip of the sort of the tip of the mainstream, right? Yeah. Okay, they were starting under thirty uh, right here. Uh, the, the 2023 GMC Hummer EV pickup starts at 84,650 oh, for the base EV2 model. Yeah, that's a that's a EV truck. So yeah, those are. What was the other one that was mentioned in that article? Uh, there's Tesla. Oh, okay. Oh, the Cadillac Lyric <laughs> Cadillac. Wait, Chevrolet will launch several new EVs later this year based on the Ultium platform in key segments, including the Silverado EV. Blazer EV and Equinox EV. I, wow, that's that's very bold. Um, I didn't know they were going to do that. That's a lot. Silverado's their main pickup truck. Blazer SUV and the Equinox. Yeah, the 2024 Cadillac Lyric, uh, starting at fifty eight thousand five hundred ninety dollars. Yeah, yikes, that's steep. So, I don't know about that. I think there was another story in the Wall Street Journal about this really tiny electric vehicle, but it was like a box. Maybe that's what we're all cursed going to be drive, having to drive around. Well, that, it's gonna that's be, all we're going to be able to afford. It's literally the size of this table. This is going to be the car that I'm going to have to drive if I'm going to if I'm going to go electric. Yeah, I, I think I think uh, let's just say the whatever policymakers, government, I, they're under the impression that the more that we adopt the tech you know, EVs that the cheaper it's going to get. I mean, that happens. Well, with, that's my assumption. I mean, that happens, it happens with everything, right? Yeah. I mean, we saw it in, in the PC sector, right? With, with memory. Yeah. Right. And, and storage. Yeah. As the tech evolves, as it gets adopted more and more and more, it gets cheaper. But I find this hard 
to adopt because again there are other factors at play like you know upgrading the electrical grid is it even possible to electrify 50 percent of your population like i i don't think we have that figured out yet and again that's just my opinion it's just my opinion i don't think we have that figured out yet and the fact that they're they're going to start pushing out um their fleet of cars uh mainly being ev that's again i, I think that's kind of bold um and a little bit risque. So uh, there, there was another interesting article in the Wall Street Journal. And this was an opinion piece ab- about um, will electric vehicles end up disappointing you? Uh, that quotes a car and driver report uh, where they uh, basically they were using real world highway test data to show that electric vehicles underperform on efficiency and range relative to the EPA figures, which by a much greater margin than internal con- combustion vehicles or ICE vehicles. Um, and the number were on, on their 75 mile per hour highway test, more than 350 ICE vehicles averaged 4% better fuel economy than what was stated on their labels. But the average range for an EV was 12.5% worse than the price sticker numbers. Yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised. Why now? Why are you not surprised about that? Well, the thing is, is when they do these tests and again, it's just, I'm assuming it's this way, but when they do these, EP, these the, EPA tests, they're yeah. doing them in a the lab. Okay. Very controlled environment, um, and that's how they get their base. Um, I don't think that they're they're getting these tests in a real world uh, perspective, like real world trial. I, right. I don't think they're doing it like that. Because here's the thing: um, we can look at the Ford F one fifty Lightning as an example. Looks great on paper, and yeah, it can tow a lot, but it cuts down your range significantly the more weight that you add to it. Because, I mean, if you think about it, yeah, the more weight you add to the vehicle, the more the motors mm-hmm. have to work. So, I mean... And that's, and, why, this, and that's why we're seeing stories like Amazon is is pulling back on its Rivian purchases, right? Because... Right, the, the Amazon vans. Yeah, they're finding delivery vans. that the, it, when you fill them up with a lot of packages, uh, it's going to slow down... Not slow down the vehicle, but it's going it's to decrease, decrease range. the range. Right. Yeah, and, and that's not to say... That happens with, you know, conventional cars with, with gas engines, right? Um, you'll, you'll lose like probably 5, 10 MPG, mm-hmm. uh, depending on what you're hauling. But I don't think but it's as also, significant yeah. as what we're seeing in EV. And there's also plentiful gas stations around that you if, right. that you can get to if you start running out, whereas you really have to plan your route out for... Right. And also, an if I if I park my truck... And I leave it for a couple of days. It's not going to lose. I don't know five to five to ten percent of its electrical charge. Yeah. You know, I, I don't park my F one fifty and have a leak in my my gas tank. That would be bad. But yeah, I don't know. And I just find it interesting that um, obviously the people that are pushing uh, EVs, obviously to no surprise, it's uh, Energy Secretary. Uh, Jennifer Granholm and White House National Climate Advisor Ali Zaidi, and they're driving a Ford F-150 Lightning. Show the picture on the screen. <laughs> I love this picture. Yeah, I this mean, is in the, it's like, all hey. smiles, like, and, and it's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's great. I'm sure it's amazing to drive that, but if we just look at the price of the F-150 uh, Lightning uh, starting model, starting price for the base model, if you look at, look at it right here, Pro, 60000 and then we go to the next model up, the XLT, sixty-three. Uh, hold on, I can't. There we go, sixty-three. Starting price sixty-three. Lariat seventy-five. And platinum, ninety-eight thousand. You're touching a hundred a hundred k right there. Right, and and that's absurd. And and you're pricing out most of most of your consumers at that point, and your you you're, know, and the businesses too that need trucks right especially business i mean think about it who drives a ford f-150 you know people in trade plumbers carpenters architects uh landscaping well there's a lot of suburban dads that drive them too that i see in my town sure exactly but like how are you going to justify that cost i know especially base base price like 60 like what yeah like you could buy a regular ford f-150 gas engine you know 45 maybe touching 50 you know a decent one for like 30k like that that that's easier to swallow but 
I, I, I don't think they're, they're, they're targeting this. They're targeting these EVs at the right market. And I know we veered a little bit off topic there with the whole EVs disappointing, but maybe not because I think this is part of it. Is it's a little bit unrealistic. Um, didn't you? Didn't you look up? Didn't you find out what the the tax credit was actually? There, um, was, it's some, actually, there was some fine print in the within the the tax rebate that that also makes it sort yeah, of useless. It's actually uh, on there on Ford's website right here. If we just look at the fine print, yeah. Um, eligible buyers of certain F one fifty Lightning models may currently qualify for the seventy five hundred in federal tax credits if the vehicle, as configured, has an MS has an MSRP of eighty thousand or less. The oh, follow- or, or less. Okay, I thought you meant. Okay, I or thought less. It, okay, yeah. I thought it was more. The following co- configurations have starting MSRPs that fall under the MSRP cap. Okay, so. The, to qualify for the federal test credit, your adjusted gross income must be below three hundred thousand for married, and two hundred twenty-five for uh, single individuals. All right. So you know you, you need to meet certain. Well, criteria. yeah, no, no. At first, when you so, told me that, I thought you meant that you had to buy something that was over eighty thousand dollars, yeah, in order to get the tax credit, which then again only benefits rich people and they can afford that. But now, all right. So now it doesn't seem as as. So if you go for the hundred thousand dollar model, then you're not going to get that, right? Because but if you want to buy Chevy Bolt at thirty five thousand, if you can still find any before they shut them, they shut them down. Then the tax credit brings it down to twenty seven thousand, and that's sort of affordable. Yeah, and again, there's also the plug in hybrids that you can still probably, but they don't. But those aren't quality. I think they're getting rid of those those rebates as well. I might be wrong on that. Right, but even but I mean, looking at like the the Ford F one hundred and fifty, the 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 vehicle that um, where's the article? Where did I put it? Uh, here it is. That that they're driving. It's like your average Joe isn't going to drive that. Which one? The Ford F one hundred and fifty Lightning. Oh no no no! no, even, no. Yeah, even no, we're model, talking like, about different models. Oh okay okay. I'm I'm talking about the Chevy Bolt, which does seem like a a mainstream. Oh, person oh absolutely. Would buy. Yeah, no no. At absolutely. some point, if they could get it down another like ten grand. Yeah. Yeah, and if it fits within their commuting and stuff like that, yeah. But I don't know. Well, I will have to see. I think we're. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go backwards, and eventually, I'm just gonna buy a donkey or a horse, and we're gonna bring back the horse and carriage. It doesn't seem that bad. It's it's only gonna, t- <laughs> honey. It's only gonna take me, uh, you know, uh, three days to get from Needham to Framingham, <laughs> <laughs> or no, Needham to where I wherever I live. It's a little further, right. Do you remember in colonial, this is way off topic, but uh, in colonial days when, when, you know, like John Adams would go from, you know, Quincy down to Philadelphia, it like, it was like a six day trip by horse and carriage. And I think that's why a lot of the towns that you see that are set up along these routes in the Northeast is because of the horse and carriage trip about how long it would take. And then you would have to stop and go to one of This is sometimes why I wish I was a time traveler. But then I, I don't think I could last very long as as a time traveler in the past. Actually, on a on a, <laughs> a on a different note, you don't want to ask me why. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. Wait, why? I don't. Well, because of the diseases and the other things that you would like somehow like. I I, I like having running water and electricity. That's well, we'd be I'm immune. A big, I'm a big fan. We'd be immune. I'd probably right? get smallpox. No, I'd probably be like <laughs> our futuristic immune systems. <laughs> yeah. But um, go, going back on the EV <laughs> okay. uh, real quick. Getting us back on track. Well, I, I was just thinking about it. I'm just trying to think of like, okay, what other uh, EVs have I seen on the road, right? Um, one other model is the Rivian uh, EV pickup truck. Um, and it's this one right here. I've, I've been seeing these all over the place. Really? All over the place. Well, you probably, do you notice sort of car models more than, than I do? I think the only thing I notice, I notice Teslas. Oh yeah, Teslas are and are and all Priuses. Over the place. Yep, Priuses and I don't, even, too. I don't know if that counts. Does that count these days? It, or were those nah, just hybrids? The Priuses are hybrids. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the Rivian, I think there's two of them here at our office. Um, but you know, then again, we are in the Northeast, kind of in like a tech sector, so I'm, yeah. I'm not surprised. But again, uh, if we just look at the price, um, it's up there, seventy five starting. Starting price seventy five, and it goes up to essentially ninety thousand after taxes, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's it's nuts. I mean, it looks cool. It looks amazing, but um, you got to worry about charging it. 
Do you do that with your truck? Do you go on like those dirt roads like that? Like that picture? Is this you on on a weekend? Um, Is this you on a weekend? No, I, I really do a lot of my adventuring in mall parking lots. <laughs> so it's it's a mall crawler. But um, I mean, it, it would be nice. The, the thing is, there's not a lot of, of trails around here in Massachusetts. Yeah. You kind of have to go to Vermont or New Hampshire and know somebody. Are you the guy so. that, that then goes into the mall parking lot and takes up four spots with no, your, with your no, truck? Because no, no. I've seen photos no. of those people, too. No, I don't yeah. do that. No. All right. Chris, thanks a lot. Thanks again for kind of joining me on the news roundup. Yeah, no problem. All right. That's all the time we've got for today's episode. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and add any comments that you have below. Join us every week for new episodes of Today in Tech. I'm Keith Shaw. Thanks for watching.